Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today for our second NWA Gives webinar all about peer to peer fundraising. Um, we're gonna let give it a minute to get some more people to join us. Um, if you are here, we would love to know who you're representing today, what organization you're with, um, and you can just add that to the chat for us. And we'll get started in a second. Alrighty, well, welcome once again to everyone. Um, we are going to get started and I know more people will continue to join us, but for now we'll get going. Um, so again, welcome to our second webinar all about peer to peer fundraising. My name is Sarah and I'm a project manager with Mighty Cause and we're the platform provider for the giving day. Um, I'm also joined today by Laura, so I'll pass it over to you, Laura, to say hello. Good morning, everybody. Glad to have you here. Um, I am excited to um, be with Sarah to share with you the benefits of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising and how they can really accelerate your fundraising. So um, thanks for joining us and I look forward to hearing your feedback. Awesome. Um, all right, so just a couple housekeeping notes before we get into the agenda. This webinar is being recorded and it'll be added to the toolkit on the NWA Gives website. Um, so if you have to hop early, you can always revisit uh, and the slide deck will also be made available. If you do have questions, you can send them over by clicking the Q&A button. Uh, Laura and I will be kind of checking that throughout the webinar. Uh, and then we'll also have a Q&A section at the end as well. So for our agenda today, uh, we're really excited. Peer-to-peer -peer is just a really great opportunity to really amp up your fundraising game. So we're gonna kind of talk about the overview and benefits if you're new to peer-to-peer -to -peer fundraising. Hopefully if you've already kind of dabbled with it, you'll still get something out of it. Um, we're gonna go over the different page types that are available on the platform. We'll talk through kind of uh, fundraising kind of four steps so you can kind of get a sense of where to start. Um, and then we'll walk through the fundraising template. We'll go over your campaign dashboard and then uh, chat about some resources and how you can get support. Um, all right, so to begin with peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, um, it is a very popular fundraising technique that is going to leverage your existing supporters to help you bring in new donors and more donations during your fundraising campaign. Um, so in a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser, you as the organization are not directly going to be asking anybody for donations. Instead, you'll be asking supporters to set up a page that they can then share the link with and start collecting donations on behalf of your organization. So they'll be sharing with their own community the link. Um, they'll be sending it in emails to family, friends, their own social networks to amplify your message, your campaign, and really bring in uh, hopefully more donors, new donors to your cause. Uh, while also spreading awareness, uh, which is really just very beneficial for you overall. Um, so benefits, if you're going to kind of look at what, why you should consider doing peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser, um, one, donor acquisition. So this is really going to be a technique that helps you expand your donor base, really gives you access to new people who might not be, you know, familiar with your organization. Maybe they've never made a gift. Maybe they didn't know your campaign was happening. They forgot about it, but they see somebody with a page link. Um, so hopefully you are going to be able to just cast your net into a wider audience to spread the word. So you're expanding your reach. More people who are supporting you are spreading the word. They're talking about your mission. They're connecting with people who have similar values to themselves. So these are really great people to become donors um, because they share, you know, the same ideas, the same kind of cause appreciation. Um, so you're able to really expand that reach. Um, you're also able to deepen the relationships that you already have with existing donors and supporters. So a really great group of people to ask to be a peer to peer fundraiser for you are going to be those existing donors, people who, you know, you see them giving to you year over year during your campaign, you know that they're going to help you out. Um, it's a great way to just deepen a relationship, offer them an additional way to get closer to your organization um, by just creating a page and then sharing that link with others. Um, and then with giving events, since we have such a limited amount of time to fundraise, um, it's really helpful to have that extra arm um, 
of just, you know, more pages, doing more work, spreading the word quicker to more people. So overall, by using peer to peer during a giving event, you're just going to continue to grow, continue to engage more uh, supporters and just raise more funds. So when you are using peer to peer fundraising on NWA gives, um, you're basically asking those supporters to fundraise and help spread the word to start the process and we're going to kind of go over this in a couple more slides but it's really, really simple all you're going to do is direct your supporters to your organizations page on NWA gives and then they'll click the little fundraise button. Um, the fundraiser button will create open a little kind of uh, pop up screen that will take them through the process of setting up an individual fundraiser page on the platform. Um, they'll be offered the option to use a template if you have created one and we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but it really then gives them the option to kind of fill out their page add additional text um, set a goal if they want to set a higher goal or you know, a lower goal, whatever they you know feel like they can achieve. Uh, but it's really very easy to set up. Um, this is kind of what the page looks like in a, in a very small screenshot, but they can, um, you know, make their title, you can set up a template with a title if you want them all to kind of be similar. Um, there's a giving activity feed, they're going to use this page as the page that they share with their social circle so they'll be sharing the link. Um, you know, on their Facebook, adding it to their Instagram posts. Um, and then any donations that they receive and the number of donors that they receive those all count towards your campaign total so everything that these pages are, are raising on their own will be rolled into that total that you see on your organization page during NWA gives. Um, a couple quick FAQs. These are some popular questions that we get uh, during the events usually. Um, will your peer to peer fundraisers with their pages, will they be able to see who donated to their pages? Yes, so they have access to that information. Um, will you as an organization receive donor data for the donations made through these campaigns? Yes, all that information is going to roll into your own organization's uh, downloadable donation report. Can peer to peer fundraisers have matching grants on their page? Yes. And then additionally, can peer to peer fundraisers take advantage of a match that you set up for your organization? Yes, so long as you enable that option while you're setting up the match. So it's very straightforward. There's a little checkbox. Um, it asks if you know peer to peer fundraisers can take advantage of a match, you just toggle on that option. Um, can peer to peer fundraiser pages add offline donations? Yes, they can. Um, a couple things to remember when you're thinking about peer to peer fundraising, one of the most important things to remember is to just ask you have no idea who's willing to do it until you ask and a lot of individuals don't even know that they can do this on your behalf without you telling them. Um, peer to peer fundraising is new for a lot of people, a lot of people have been doing peer to peer fundraising for a while, but there's always going to be a new group, a uh, new batch of supporters that you're going to want to, you know, offer this option to. Um, but while you are thinking about peer to peer fundraising it's really important to also kind of have an idea for your own organization. Um, as far as goal setting so how is peer to peer fundraising fit into your campaign goals so hopefully for NWA gives you know you're registered you're starting to think about it if you're a new participant you're setting new goals of your previous participant you're kind of familiar with like how much you're raising. Um, and you can kind of gauge how many donors you want this year, how many dollars you're trying to achieve. All of these can be kind of trickled down into peer to peer fundraising goal setting. So what do you want to get out of peer to peer fundraising this year? Do you want to increase the new number of new donors? Peer to peer fundraising is a great way to do that. Um, are your goals maybe not monetary necessarily? There's other things you can also achieve with peer to peer fundraising, engaging more supporters, engaging your board. There's all sorts of different ways that you can set goals that peer to peer fundraising can help. Um, and then it's really important to remember to track your progress. So keeping supporters updated when you do finally get that batch of peer to peer supporters fundraising on your behalf, it's so important to keep them updated. Um, create kind of a communication process that you follow to bring awareness to your fund your fundraisers and then also your goal progress so as you are going through the campaign as early giving starts and your peer to peer fundraisers are getting to work don't just leave them hanging keep them a part of that community. Um, create an email blast that goes out maybe weekly uh, sharing the progress thanking them maybe offering them a new tip for the week new people that they could consider asking. Uh, keep them very engaged so that's how you're going to have a successful peer to peer fundraiser. 
Um, and then, of course, take notes what works well, where you can improve. Maybe you get feedback from your peer to peer fundraisers. Maybe they were confused about something. Um, but don't be afraid to just start. So even if you have kind of a limited amount of time and resources, you don't need to have a whole, you know, welcome package in place to get peer to peer fundraising going. You can start with just, you know, one or two supporters uh, and then grow it from there. And then, of course, follow up is going to be very key. Uh, just like you want to follow up with your donors and your, you know, whoever is helping your campaign, following up with your new donors and your peer to peer fundraisers after the event is going to be really crucial to one, retaining those donors, making them feel a part of your organization, and then hopefully helping those peer to peer supporters feel connected, feel like they made an impact, uh, know the impact that they made so that they come back and want to do it again uh, for your next campaign. So kind of breaking peer to peer fundraising down into four digestible steps, because sometimes it can feel a little overwhelming if you're new to it. Uh, but first, you're going to want to plan. So talking about building any resources that you can share with supporters. What is peer to peer fundraising? What are our goals? Um, here's how you can help us. Uh, so kind of laying that groundwork that I was talking about with goal setting is going to be really helpful. Um, recruiting. So then you're going to move into phase two, where you're thinking about who to ask. Your board members are a really great group of people. Um, some people have, you know, trouble activating their board. This is a really easy way to create a page for them, give them the link, and then have them go to town, you know, recruiting uh, donations and letting people know about the event. Volunteers are a good group to reach out to. Anyone who's really engaged with your uh, your organization, so engage supporters, volunteers, even employees. Um, and then, of course, you know, those donors that you feel close to, maybe they come back every year and you know the ones they're emailing you asking how you're doing, um, everything like that. So that's a really great group. So you'll want to send out an email or a newsletter or even a social post or all three, letting everyone know that peer to peer fundraising is an option to get involved this year and then give them the next steps. If your next step is email us with your interest or click this button to fundraise on our profile, know the next step because people need to know what to do next. Um, step three is starting to support your uh, fundraisers. So making it fun, making it engaging, sending out, you know, maybe a weekly quick check in to everybody, letting them know where you are with your goals. You know, we have X number of donors who have given to our peer to peer fundraiser pages. Awesome job. Uh, really rallying your supporters to get them off to a great start. Uh, and this can look like, you know, whatever it looks like based on your capacity level. So don't feel like all your resources have to go into supporting your peer to peer team, but some of them should be. So you want to make sure you give them a little bit of attention uh, because they're working hard and they want to feel close and like they're supported. Um, so resources, email journey, onboarding them. Maybe you want to do like a quick Zoom call with everyone who's interested and just answer any questions all at once, that type of deal. Um, and then, of course, stewarding. So helping those supporters, closing the loop when it comes time and the event is over, you know, pulling those final numbers, checking over your downloadable donor reports and seeing who gave to peer to peer fundraisers, saying thank you to those new donors, having a plan in place to kind of onboard those new donors so that they can maybe sign up for an email list or figure out what your next event is. Uh, anything you can do to kind of make a connection with those new donors as soon as you can. Um, and then, of course, your supporters as well. So you want to make sure that uh, oh, I flip flop these two, but you get the idea. So your supporters also, they did a great job. They put in the work. They took the time. That's huge. It's so hard to get people to, you know, just buy into something. So these are people you really, really want to spend the time to thank. Uh, maybe have a small party for them, any type of personal gesture, maybe your board can write a thank you message. Uh, but supporting you with peer to peer fundraisers is so critical to your growth and helping you have a successful campaign. So just make sure you have kind of a, a process in place to thank and celebrate them. Um, recruiting for peer to peer fundraisers. So digging in a little deeper into this really great groups of people to reach out to and start the ask are your board members, volunteers, program supporters, uh, and especially, you know, any of your social media followers. So some of your followers might not be local to you, maybe they've moved away. 
um, but they're still engaged with your work, that's still a good group of people to uh, reach out to. So you can, you know, give them the direct link to fundraise uh, and then spread the word even further. So providing that support, um, sending emails, sharing resources, creating templates. Well, I'll show you the template in a minute and then just making sure you follow up. Um, so digging into the kind of two most popular fundraising types pages, page types on the platform. So we have individual fundraising type page. Um, this is where a supporter is going to create a page. It's connected to your organization um, and they're just using it to fundraise towards their goal. So maybe you've set a goal for everyone to raise like $200. Um, so they're fundraising towards that goal. All those funds are going to you, of course, same with all of our pages. And then we also have the team fundraising page, which is kind of um kind of like the next level so it's made of multiple individual fundraiser pages um, you can kind of see two examples here individual it's created by a supporter uh, to solicit donations so it's kind of a singular page with a donate button a small giving feed um, team pages have that team facing view and then they're made up of multiple so you can see in a leaderboard it offers friendly competition this is a great way to get a board involved um, it also adds that little extra layer of visibility and and friendly competition that makes people want to, you know, really spread the word like I want to be first place, I want to be, you know, up on the top of the leaderboard. Um, so this is kind of what the hierarchy looks like. Um, let me know if you have questions. Uh, but speaking to individual fundraisers, I wanted to kind of clarify as well. Fundraising pages, while they are considered an individual page, multiple people can still use it. So if you have like a, a, you know, a parent who wants to fundraise with a friend, they don't need to set up a team page necessarily. They can use the same page link to solicit donations. Um, so I just wanted to make kind of that clarification. Um, this is really it's really easy to use. You can see kind of the two different ways. So this was Barb's uh, fundraiser for a school, and then we have a parent fundraising challenge. So you kind of can get the idea that the singular page can be used by multiple people. Um, and then digging in a little more into the team page, it has that layer of friendly competition because there is a leaderboard. You can decide you know, what's shown in this, but there's a little donor timeline. And this is where you can really say like, uh, maybe a group of people like students or your board wants to fundraise, this is where they can also publicly share like a group statement. Um, so they can say like, you know, our goal is to raise this much money total from the board. Um, and then they can share this page. People can look for the board member on the team page. But these are the two most popular page uh, options that will be used probably during the campaign. Um, as far as it goes with your actual dashboard view as an admin of your organization, so underneath the fundraising tools sidebar, you'll see campaigns, um, this kind of pop up, and you'll see fundraiser templates. So this is where your peer to peer kind of areas live. Your fundraiser template is really easy to use. Um, everyone gets one by being a part of the NWA Gives campaign. If you used it last year, you'll want to go in, you'll want to make any updates if you have the year. Um, but this is where you can kind of create that quick, easy, plug in some info um, so that when someone clicks to create a campaign and fundraise for you, they're not starting from scratch. Sometimes a blank page can be intimidating, so it's helpful to offer them a template. Um, campaigns is where you will find all of the peer to peer fundraising that has happened for your organization. So you can see quickly uh, who owns it if an admin created the page or if a specific peer to peer supporter created the page when they created it when they you know published it. Um, it's really easy to get a quick idea of how much was raised so there's a column for that and then there's three little dots to the right, which I highly recommend just as a best practice to look through your campaigns and toggle off the discoverability for any campaigns from last year uh, or anything that's out of date. That way, everything that's showing up in the search for NWA Gives this year is a current active campaign. Um, a little bit more about the fundraiser template, really, really easy to use. It's going to take a lot of the fear out of fundraising, especially if it is a new person who is new to peer to peer fundraising for an organization. Um, but this also just gives you the opportunity as the organization to 
put in any information or say what you want to say. So if you want to make sure everyone's pages have your mission statement on it, you can add that text to the body of the fundraiser template. If you wanted to add an image, make sure everybody had like, you know, a logo or something, you can make everything very consistent. Of course, supporters can still customize the page. So even though you've created a template, they can still go in and change their goal. Maybe they feel like 500 is too much. They want to raise 250. Um, so they can go in and they can make any adjustments, um, update their name, um, stuff like that. And then you'll just uh, maybe you'll just enable that fundraiser template, and then people can start to use it. So to use the template, they're going to click fundraise, like I said on your page. Um, this is kind of what the pop up looks like for them. It'll say get started, uh, and then they can use the template provided by your organization, which just makes it really easy for them. And then they click build, and it populates a brand new fundraising page that they can then start to make any adjustments to. Um, pro tip here is to uh, share this direct fundraise button as a link in any emails or social media posts. So of course you can link to your org page, but then you can also directly link to the fundraise button. Um, so it's one less step for them. They can literally just click the link to your fundraise button. Um, a little bit about the support. So we have a ton of resources available for peer to peer fundraising. So um, be sure to check them out. I've added them here. And then you can also once I upload the slides, you'll be able to kind of click these as links. But if you go to our uh, resource library on the website, you'll be able to see uh, webinars. We have one that I pulled up turning supporters into superstars equipping your peer to peer fundraisers for fundraising success. So you have plenty of time before the event to start kind of thinking through peer to peer fundraising setting goals thinking about who you want to ask so take some time to watch you know webinars read through our blog posts so we have a you know this one looks very interesting fundraising secrets to ignite support and then especially i think this is just a really great tool to get your board members activated so we have a specific post about board member fundraising activation with peer to peer um, and then we also have a peer to peer fundraising ebook that you can download and kind of read through It offers tips um, suggestions. Um, and then if there's anything specific that you need, you can always just let us know if you're not finding it our support team can point you to a resource that they think would be really helpful for you. Um, and then speaking to our support team, NWA Gives and the Mighty Cause support team are always here to help you if you have any technical questions. This is that resource center I was talking about, so you can access uh, the support at MightyCause.com library. This is going to be you know, those you know most popular questions if you have donors who need support, if you have event and team fundraising support, like why is my, you know, where's my goal bar? How do I set that? That type of deal. Um, and then if you want those guides that I was talking about, um, the blog posts, the ebooks, the webinars, that's where it is in our resource center. So you can go to mightycause.com slash guide. Um, and then, of course, the NW Gives toolkit on the nwgives.org site. I've linked a bunch of these there, uh, but I do think it's helpful for you to also have just the direct link in case you want to find something that maybe I didn't add. Um, so if you want to kind of dig back in time through our blog posts, uh, there's a lot of good content in there. Um, I know that was quick and there is a lot to kind of talk through, but I wanted to definitely keep it a little high level um, for everyone. So if you have questions specifically about peer to peer fundraising, who to ask, um, I'll open up the floor to you all. And then I know, Laura, you also want to share uh, a couple things as well. Thank you so much, Sarah, for all that information. Does anyone have any questions? Well, while you're thinking about it, um, if anything comes to mind, I wanted to just share a couple quick things. Um, I did want to encourage you on our day of giving, you know, if you do get um, some peer to peer supporters on your team, you know, that's a perfect day. The day of giving is a perfect day for you to pull those people into your organization, maybe have a watch party to watch those numbers coming in because you can see that live feed on the website, you know, make it a celebration and really make them feel like they are a part of your team. If they are already one of your top supporters, it will just solidify that relationship with those 
um, with those people and just make them feel again, just part of your team. So I would encourage you to do that. I would encourage you to do a fun, you know, um, watch party anyway, the day of, and that's a great um, opportunity for you to go live on Facebook and share some things about your board. If you guys get your board together to watch, you know, the donations come in. Um, it's an exciting day. So I encourage you to do that. I do want to share a couple of dates coming up. So this Thursday, the 14th, from 10 to 11, um, I've already sent out the link for my office hours, but I'll send it out again. Um, and then don't forget on March 28th, we have our big rally. Uh, our security bank will be grilling out for us at um, Mount Hebron Park in Lowell. And um, it's a new park and it's beautiful. And I'm really excited to um, choose someplace new this year for our rally. But just come, enjoy yourself. It's such a fun networking opportunity for you to get together with other nonprofits in our area that are doing amazing work just like yourselves um, and just be with your people. So I encourage you to come. That's going to be 12, uh, 12 o'clock on the 28th and you can register for that event um, online. Um, and then the last thing I want to encourage you to take a look at, I'm going to send out today our list of our prizes for the giving day. So if you are new to NWA Gives, um, First Security Bank provides us with um, around $12,000 to give away to our organizations on the giving day. And we are we give money for uh, most dollars and also most donors in specific time. So every hour we are gonna be giving away $100 to uh, a random drawing. And then you have an opportunity to um, get money for the most dollars raised during certain hours, like uh, our coffee break, which is from 10 to 11. If you raise, that one is for the most donors, but you could get an additional $250 donation just for you know having the most donors in that hour time. So once I send this out to you, you might take a look and strategize at, you know, think about is, is there a time or a prize that you really want to focus on and you can kind of guide your campaign to maybe win one of those prizes. So I will send that out to you guys today. Um, the final hour is a very competitive time. It's a thousand dollars. Whoever makes the most money in the final hour, that's an additional thousand dollars towards your campaign. So this money can really make a difference in your uh, fundraising this year. So um, if there are no questions, I think that that is all I had. Sarah, anything else from you? Um, I'll just say one little tip as well, since you all are going to start to look at those prizes, um, peer to peer fundraising, sharing kind of the schedule of what prizes specifically you are trying to capture during the day is a really great technique to let your fundraisers know like when they should be most active. So instead of just saying like share the link during the day. Um, if there's specific hours like that coffee break um, that Laura was talking about, tell them during these hours, really, really push your campaign link on socials, Facebook, email, that type of thing. So that's a good way to get them involved um, and really make a difference when it really counts for you. And also just make sure your donors are aware that Giving Day is coming and that you've uh, reached out to them. They're not completely caught off guard. They know that this is happening and that they're aware and ready for April 4th. Also, the rally is the, the opening day for our week of early giving. So you are welcome to um, accept donations in that, in that uh, early giving time. We do have a specific prize for the early giving week. Um, and so you would... Um, I would encourage you to just make sure your people know. And if you have any questions, of course, reach out to me anytime at info at nwagives.org. And I am happy to help you and thrilled that you're participating. You guys have a great day. Bye, everyone.